This video is brought to you by StoneAgeGamer.com. It's where I go for my gaming accessories, systems, and more. So be sure to check out StoneAgeGamer.com. Link in description. Hey guys, how you doing? My name is John with Games381.com. This episode, I'll be reviewing another console, and I wouldn't call this console rare by any stretch of the imagination, but it is obscure, it is unique, uh, it's not very well known, uh, and so it's not very expensive either because of that, I guess. So just because it's, it's obscure and unknown doesn't necessarily mean that it's worth a lot of money. <laughs> okay, so what the system is, it's called the Video Art uh, Gaming System, and it came out by LGN in 1987. Now, this is the time of year that LGN was hurting for certain because LGN uh, was coming out with this line of toys called the Intertech Water Gun Line. And this, this was released the previous year, and this is a pretty controversial line because these water guns look so real. They look like real guns. They had situations where cops were literally shooting these kids because they thought these kids were had real guns. So it was a bad PR move by LGN. Uh, other toys that LGN had produced, uh, you guys may know of, are Thundercat toys, uh, Gremlin toys, ET toys. So one thing I give LGN huge credit for it was their ability to get great licenses, not only for the toy line, but later on their video game publishing department. So games for the NES like Nightmare on Elm Street, which it's interesting enough was actually developed by Rarsoft, in case you guys didn't know that. Also games like Maximum Carnage, pretty good game actually, it's a great beat em up for the Genesis Super Nintendo, probably one of the better LGN games out there. So a lot of people will say that LGN produced a lot of bad games, which is, is the case, there are not a lot of not great games for that LGA produced, but they published the games. They didn't develop any other games. They worked with third party companies on every game that they published, but they were able to acquire some really impressive licenses. You know, um, Karate Kid, to name a few. They published the very first MLB license game, Major League Baseball license game, among NFL as well. So, pretty impressive. But back to the LGN system itself um, it's basically a Microsoft Paint system. And basically what it has a joystick, there's interchangeable cartridges. I'm going to do an unboxing. I'll show you what the system looks like here in a second. Uh, and it, it plugs right to your TV. And it's basically a glorified coloring book. So it retailed for, I believe, about $90 back in 1987. So either as a parent, you can go out and purchase this $90 system. And, and you can have your kid use a TV to color it. Or you can purchase a $2 coloring book and have your kid use that. What do you think most parents did? They, of course, they opted for the coloring book and the system. But uh, as soon as it came out, pretty much you can find it in the bargain bins for less than 20 bucks. There are about eight cartridges that were released for it. It comes packed in with a coloring book one. But, you know, just like I was saying before, great licenses. They had some Disney ones that were available. Basically, it's a storybook. They also had a Marvel uh, license as well as Looney Tunes through Warner Brothers, which is really impressive. And in case you guys are wondering about the history for LGN, uh, LGN was started in 1970 by a guy named Jack Friedman. Jack Friedman, once he left LGN, he started THQ. Many of you guys may know THQ, they, they published games uh, up until several years ago, although I think they just actually got uh, the naming rights got by, bought by another company recently. Long story. But uh, so he found THQ, and he also, once he left THQ, he found a company called Jack's Pacific, which is still around. You may remember them, probably they're most famous for their plug and plays that they had uh, several years ago. But they also produce huge, these huge toys and toy stores. You'll see like these, these like two foot, three foot Darth Vader's or Superman or Batman, whatever. They're still around as a company. So Jack is a busy entrepreneur for sure. And in case you guys are wondering where they got the name LJN, it actually stands for Lord Jesus. No, no, I'm just playing. No, it doesn't actually stand for that, of course. But it does stand for the Norman's initials backwards. So Lewis J. Norman. I'm not sure why they decided to do the, the initials backwards. Maybe it has a better ring to it than NJL, perhaps. I don't know. But in the, throughout the late 80s, they were hurting. You know, MCA actually purchased them, and MCA actually sold LGN to Acclaim. Acclaim had published some games of theirs under the LGN label as well. And they just basically dissolved and now it's defunct in 1987, no more, longer around. The last game they actually... Uh, published was a Dreamcast game in 2000. So LGN, unfortunately, is no longer around. But yeah, back to the video art system. I'm kind of going off tangent here. Back to the video art system. Let me do an unboxing. Let me show you what's included here with the system. 
and let me know what you guys think. And then I'll, after the unboxing, I'll demonstrate how the video art system actually works. So here it is. This is the video art electronic video drawing system. Probably one of the worst box arts I've seen on Force System in a long time. First off, as a kid, when this came out, I was six years old. Okay, this would have freaked me out because I hated clowns. I really did. I hated clowns. They gave this clown in the picture here on TV. He's got an evil grin, and it's, oh, man, he's got like blue makeup. Oh man, this thing is freaking me out already. And then you got this poltergeist dog jumping out of the screen, about to hit this kid in the head, about to bite him in the face. But this kid doesn't seem to mind. He's pretty happy. You get the LGN logo in the bottom left corner. And for some reason, decide to do this in pink here or salmon, whatever. Uh, create your own. It's really hard to read that on pink. It should have been yellow, maybe in bolder colors, my personal opinion. And then on the back, this is what uh, the system actually looks like. More, some screenshots of the cartridges. Uh, activity cartridges sold separately. I'm not sure how much the cartridges sold for. And one thing I do remember about the system when it came out were the commercials. They were terrible. Definitely memorable, but terrible. In fact, they were probably worse than the Atari Jaguar commercials in the 90s, believe it or not. I remember they had some really cheap 1980s rap song involved. In fact, here's a snippet of it. It went like this. Yo, if you're like me, you spend all day just watching TV, but then my mama, she got smart. She got me video art. Yeah, I'm not about, I'm not about to win an uh, award for my singing skills, trust me, but you guys get the idea. It was really bad. If you guys have time, Google uh, video art commercials. You can see for yourself. They're terrible. Now let's take a look, closer look at the system look. itself. Okay, so let's take a closer look at the system itself. Uh, this is really shouts out 1980s. I mean, this is a really bizarre looking system. Uh, this is where the controller actually lays right here and stays. This is, it's got a nine pin uh, controller port here. I'm, I'm curious if a Atari 2600 controller would work there or ColecoVision or even Sega Genesis might work. We'll test those out, we'll, we'll find out. Um, also, these are the different buttons. You have your erase, your page. You can flip different images here. This is your power clicks, and this is your clear, both clear buttons. Looks like your power one's the only one that really clicks. This is where your game cart plugs into there on the back. It's very, very basic. You have your AC adapter, and you have your RF adapter. And this is the back. Speaking of game cart, it's pretty small. It's about the same size as, or maybe a little bit smaller than an 8-bit Atari cartridge. There are 8-bit line of computers. And it's probably a little bit smaller than Commodore 64 cartridge as well. And here's the RF. You get your switch box here. Uh, this is your AC adapter, nothing really special. This is your joystick. And there's a long cord. It's kind of like a ColecoVision uh, you know, extension cord. <laughs> this is the controller, kind of weird looking. And it's very top, this actually clicks. You have to hold this down to draw. This is how you select your colors, kind of kind of cool. You can select you know, yellow and and you can do you know, skin color, orange. Looks like there's, let's see, about 16 different colors you can choose from. This is your vertical line here. You can draw a nice vertical line. This is your horizontal line. Hold this down, it'll draw a nice, perfect horizontal line, which makes things easier. And it doesn't really center very well. So I'm kind of curious how this will actually work, but, and this is your, it's got this like nice little knob in the back and that's where it basically it plugs into like so. Without any further ado, let's plug this bad boy in and see how it works. So the first thing I noticed is when I plugged in the cartridge, is this game system has no sound at all. So I guess we don't really need sound to draw, but it seems kind of odd. And the load time is a little bit ridiculous. You, this is it. This is your waiting. You have, it says activity cartridge. has the year, LGN toys, trademark, whatever, copyrights. But it takes that long to load. Now there's also, this is a black one. You know, there's a black screen background. There's supposed to be a white background as well. Can't figure out how to do that. I pushed all the buttons, all the options. I just can't figure it out. Now, I, I'm sitting on a color here, and you'll notice that I'm having a really hard time coloring in within the borders. It's really hard. Here's an example of the vertical line, horizontal line. You can just, just push that button on the controller and do that. And you can't really change the width of the paintbrush like you can in, like, Microsoft Paint or whatever. And it just... it. Here's the next screenshot. You can switch, uh, switch pages, but 
the this makes sense because look, everything remains there on top of this one now. So, and in order to erase it, you can't just erase it all, at least from what I could see. You have to push the erase button and then go over it, kind of scribble all over with the erase button, which is completely ludicrous to me. If you turn the system on without a cartridge, this is what you get. You see this image here, and you have to wait for about a minute or so, and eventually it'll get you to a scribble screen. For the sake of time, I'm going to fast forward here just a bit because I don't want to waste your guys' time. But as well as time about, about the erase, you, can, you have to basically go over it manually over what you already drew. I did test out Genesis controller. I tested out the Atari 2600 as well as ColecoVision controller. They kind of worked, like the cursor kind of moved, but you can't draw or paint anything, obviously. And this particular controller did not work on either of those systems, just so you guys know. So in conclusion, how is the video art? Well, let's put it this way. I have a lot of systems in my collection, and this is certainly up there as probably the worst game console uh, that ever came out. <laughs> and I'm, I'm usually pretty unbiased in my reviews. I try to be fair in my reviews, but honestly, I don't mind LGN as a company, and a lot of people give, you know, say the games are terrible, whatever. But this particular product, I'm not even sure why I even hit the market. The controls, are broken I mean as far as just this thing is so super sensitive it's hard to draw with the lines near impossible the erase feature uh, is is you should be able to erase the whole thing right away instead of just having to go over what you just drew um, the control is unique I give them that I kind of wish you could hold a controller like this upside down rather than like this it feels awkward but the size of a ColecoVision controller actually now I think about it but overall yeah this is a really poorly designed console when you can certainly pick up a coloring book for a couple of dollars back in the day or less and draw easily a lot more easy than this um, so this is certainly up there is probably my personal opinion the worst console of all time uh, let me know what you guys think i appreciate you guys watching i appreciate you guys commenting of course subscribing if you guys want to stay in touch you can follow me on facebook twitter instagram twitch tv as well as my website gamesradio1.com We'll see you guys soon. Take care. Happy gaming.